10 point assignment. We're going to go out here in the bay, and you guys are going to find your favorite piece of fire equipment. And in two to three minutes, you are going to tell us why that's your favorite piece of fire equipment. You guys on the webinar, this will be posted. This learning activity will be posted sometime later this evening or tomorrow. Uh, I expect you guys to prep this for the next time you come in. We'll probably be going over this either Thursday or Saturday, depending upon the rest of the course. I don't think I signed it. You can't refuse at any time. <laughs> Retract that, at least. All right. Hi, I'm Jeff Dilley, and today we'll be talking about the uh, uses of a flathead, flathead axe. Um, it's got many uses. Um, a lot of people like to use them for uh, ventilation, um, open up a roof. Um, a lot of, a lot of times, people will make when you go to make your first cut, make a hole, and then you realize that the head of the axe is going to get stuck. So. I've learned that if you turn the axe head over and actually <coughs> cut your cut your hit cut your hole with the blunt end of the axe, it'll actually work easier and better for you. You can also uh, chalk chop a door with an axe. Um, you could uh, use it with another tool like a halogen bar um, for forcible entry. Um, to use it as the blunt to uh, hammer in the other tool into the door. Um, they come in fiberglass and wooden handles, easy to clean. Mm. What else do I got? Two minutes, Jeremiah? You're fine, keep going. <clears throat> okay. Um, Is it your favorite tool? Um, maybe my favorite tool in your bay, maybe. My favorite tool is probably a New York hook. So. Okay, why'd you choose the axe? Uh, I couldn't find your New York tool. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. So I chose the axe. Are it's you done? Uh, yeah. Anything else? Taken. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Good, good job. I'm James Meyer. I'm going to go through the uh, uses of Halligan. Uh, bar with you. Hagen bars. Shit. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Take your time. Many uses. Um, like Billy was saying, you can use it with flathead axe. You, can, you know, open doors with it. You can open about anything with it. Use it. Uh, break off padlocks. Break windows. Chalk things. Um, you can even use it as a search tool. Um, How would you use this as a search tool? Well, as you're searching, you can just either keep it along the wall and you can search out, or you can use it to sway, swing back and forth out into the room. Okay. With the non pointy end. Why is it your favorite tool? Uh, it's just a tool I always grab, go on fire alarms on that, just a good, good tool to have. I normally put this and a flat head axe together because you don't know what you're going to run into. So, at least with these, with this and flathead axe, you can get through about anything. Okay. So. Anything else? Yeah, that's about it. A couple different things. It could be called a Chicago tool or a New York hook. It's got two different hooks on here, which really make it great for uh, pulling the ceiling. Uh, pretty long. It's got a little pry bar on one end of it. So, if you're waiting on the guy with the irons, you can try to pry a door open or pretty much anything. You can use it to reach up, take out a window, or pretty much got, you can use it for almost anything. Some people will uh, take different kinds of tape or like rope, wrap it around the handle to wrap it up with tape or something to put on the handle so when you do pull up into the ceiling, your hands don't keep slipping off of it.
that's about it. I'm Dave Allison with Harrison Fire. We're going to do a little class on our Motorola 800. This version is the XTS 2500. There's XTS 5000 also, it's a little bit bigger. 280 channels versus 220 channels can be put into this radio. This one is an 800 megahertz. Uh, Motorola makes radios in every bandwidth. Fire service in this county, we're using 154 megahertz radios, which is the VHF frequencies. Uh, that's kind of the old system, but we still have them in some of our vehicles and a lot of portables still floating around. So when the 800 goes down, you can go back to the good old standard that will work. Uh, the radio, a lot of people have a problem using it. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, going over the buttons on the top, you've got the volume button. Uh, is the large round button here. You've got the channel button to change the channels in a given zone. Uh, you've got the ABC switch, which is so you can go from zone 1, 2, and 3, or A, B, and C. So you can go the first three zones just by flipping that switch. So if you're in Harrison Township and you need a Johnson County dispatch and you're on your Ops 1 channel, when you just take and flip that button to B, you're now on Johnson County's Ops 1 channel. And you can talk to their dispatcher and order up equipment from that department and not have to go through your dispatch. Makes life a lot quicker and easier using the ABC button instead of the other way to change the the radio is go down to the keypad on the front and go through that. We'll go through that next when we turn it on. Um, emergency button on top uh, for your maydays and emergency situations. Orange button on the top, you press it. Uh, if you hit it accidentally, you should. the radio will tell you it's an emergency status and make a noise, a beep. You should automatically, if you're not in an emergency, you should automatically shut it off and let your dispatcher know that it's not an emergency, it's accidental set off. If it's a true emergency, what I tell my guys to do is hit the button and then grab the knob and turn it to every channel and come back. If you think about it, it will put every channel in that zone in emergency and it will piss the dispatcher off because he'll have 16 emergencies hitting him at one time. So he'll know it's a real deal and have to go through and, and deal with it. So that's a little trick a lot of people don't know that if you hit emergency and you're in emergency, you start changing that channel, it's putting every channel you go to into emergency and telling that dispatcher on those channels. Uh, Buttons down below. This one is the Model 2, I believe they call it. It's got this small screen and these limited amount of buttons. The uh, Model 3 has a full DTMF keypad, like a phone keypad on the front, plus these buttons. Um, but with this particular model that you're going to see, uh, most of the people in the county have, is just the Model 2 type. So when you turn it on, Fire Ops 1. it'll tell you that you're on Fire Ops 1. The way you know the difference between the old system that's still in these radios that they haven't taken out and the new system is a female's voice is old, so if you hear a female, that means the dispatcher can't hear you, you're on the wrong frequency, you're on the old set of frequencies and you need to just basically flip the ABC switch and that put, automatically puts you right back to the, I flip from A to B, so it put me on the proper one. So if somebody manually put this into the old channels and you hear the female voice say, Fire Ops 1! like my girl voice. You just take and flip that from A to B and automatically you should hear the man's voice and you know you're on the right system to talk to your dispatcher. So when you look at the keypad, it's giving you information. Uh, the radio will actually tell you just a ton of information that the county doesn't program into here. Your battery, how many uses you have left in your battery, how many charges your battery has had. I mean there's just a ton of stuff but they just give us a little limited window of what we have. Uh, you have to go through what's down here you got the, the one, the two, and the three button. Uh, the oval white buttons have one, two, and three. If you hit below, or if you look above, it will tell you what that button will control. So you have it will control zone, it will control view, nuisance delete. And if we take the round button here and we push it right or left, it will change those down there. Now we have program, mute, and battery. We hit it again. We have the clock. We hit it again, we're back to where we started, zone, view, and nuisance. And you can go back the other way, clock, program, battery, mute, zone, view, and nuisance. Uh, if you get messed up and you don't, the old standby is you can always shut it off and turn it back on and it's going to go right back to where it should be. I didn't start the clock because I know I can take 15 <laughs> or 20 minutes on a radio, guys. <laughs> Here's a little timer on his videos running, I'm sure. Uh, next buttons, or the home button. Uh, you hit that, and it basically takes you to your dispatch channel, your home channel, that the radio is set on. If you went off it, you can hit home, and it takes you back to it. If you're going through zones, 
you got zones up and we've jumped down to Johnson County and now we want to make this radio Johnson County north because we're going to work in Johnson County on this fire that they're working. We hit home, this radio is now locked in on Johnson County and we can talk to engine 52 just got disregarded on the run or we can be on that run with 52s and now this is working in the Johnson County mode by hitting that home button and it won't revert back when our dispatch hits up we're not going to hear them because now we're in Johnson County and using their system and dealing with their dispatcher so we locked it in by hitting the home button. Uh, the computer button we won't go over that that's more advanced use this is a basic level class for you guys. Um, so that's the general layout of the Motorola 800 XTS 2500 the advanced class is next. Thank you. We're ready. ready. Go ahead. Three, two, one. Okay. So, nice to meet you guys. My name is Jordan Shannis. Uh, most of you know me here, so we don't need to go into my background and my history. Um, we were told to pick our favorite tool on a fire truck and what we use on the fire ground the most, and I picked a new world cook. Um, does anybody else know some other names with it? Awesome crowd. Good job. You know, we call Chicago it Hook. Huh? Chicago Hook. Chicago Hook. The New York Hook. The Hook. I mean, it's just my tool I take off the fire truck. Um, you've got a couple different options with it. You've got your this end right here. And this is what distinguishes the New York hook from the closet hook or any other type of hooks because it's got the, the Z on the top of it, right? They come in all shapes and sizes all the way up from 12 feet to 6 feet to 8 feet to 4 feet. Um, I personally like about this one, about 6 foot tall one. It's about as tall as I am. So it gives me an extra 6 foot reach, which normal ceilings in a house are what? Eight feet. Eight. eight feet. Thank you. Thank you. About eight feet. So this lets you poke a hole in it. Um, basically, what do we use the newer cook for? Pulling ceiling. Pulling ceiling, right? Yeah. What's what's the main job when we when we go into a fire? I mean, think about it. And you go, you know, FDNY. You go everywhere else. They've got multiple different companies that do multiple different things. We all know down here in Morgan County, we're manpower limited, correct? So you basically got one or two people maybe on your attack line, and then you've maybe got one or two people inside to open up your fire. And once you get a taste of that and you do it for the first time, I mean, that's when it, 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 uh, sorry, when you love it or hate it. And my first fire when I walked into, I was gave this tool and I was told the fire is right there. I need you to pull all the ceiling. And what I do, did exactly what I was told and I loved it because it was hot, it was fun, I got to break stuff. We as firefighters like to break stuff, right? This is what this tool can be used for. I mean, you can punch a hole in a wall with it, you can pull a ceiling with it to open up, you know, for the fire to attack with it. You can break windows with it, you can pull, I mean, it's got the hooks on it, so you can pull the window jams out of it. Um, we also take it to the roof, right? When we ventilate, do we take this to the roof? That's what it's for in New York. That's what it's for in New York, see? Dave knows all the history about it. So that's what it's for in New York. They take it to the, you know, to the roof, and once they cut their hole, what can they do with it? They can use it just like this to push, push down and clear the hole, right? Awesome. So, some techniques with it, obviously, when you're on the roof. Dave, don't they normally? Go like this and push down with it, right? Yep, yep. You can also flip your, you know, when they cut a hole, you can flip it and do all that fun stuff. Can you sound the floor with it? You can, you can sound the floor yeah. with it, yeah. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can hit it like that. You can use it like this. You know, once you come in there, don't the stab too. it real hard. You may stab something you don't want to stab. We've all been there and done that, unfortunately. You know, this is techniques. I'm going down. I'm going down. We're on techniques. Techniques of the New York cook. I mean, we've all had it before. We all know kind of how to open and shut it, right? <laughs> Good. So basically, you know, to pull a ceiling, it's, it's just what it is. You stick it up there and you pull it down, right? And you can do that with basically how you use it. 
Um, once you come up to the bottom end of it, we'll talk about that real quick since the time is running up. You can pry with it. You can pry with it. Anybody have any questions over the New York that we've talked about so far? Yes. Does it have any other ends that go on that? Does it have any other ends that can go on that? Yes, it can. What is that? You can have an ads in. I mean, you can go to Home Depot for fifty dollars and buy it. No, 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 no. Uh, when you order those in fire service, is there any other ways they come? Is there any other varieties of the New York hook? Well, let's look at That's a New York either. roof hook because it's got that on the end, is it not? Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't have that on the end, let's say it has something else on the end, what would it be? It's got a handle. Handle? I've never seen a handle one, but okay. You've never seen one with like a D on it? Oh, what are you talking about? No, not a New York hook. Maybe how about a gas meter tool might be made on it? a gas it? meter tool to go around and shut the gas off, right? I mean, that's a good question that we would look up together if we had time, but I am running out of time, so I've hit the four-minute mark. Anybody else have any questions other than Dave? Good job. Going once, going twice. I'm done. Are you ready? Uh, my name's Leah. Um, we were told to pick our favorite tool. I picked the Halligan. It's just going to I'm not supposed to carry it currently. Um, my favorite thing about it is the fact I can search with it, um, take doors with it, windows, Obviously, search with the um, pry in, not the one with the. Uh, what's the word for that? Point. Point. No, I thought there was a technical word. <laughs> oh well. Um, came out in 1948 by Hugh Halligan, based off the Kelly tool from New York City. It's a deputy. I looked it up. Deputy Fire Chief. Um, you can also take it on the roof when you're pulling or not pulling ceilings when you're uh, getting ready to vent. Stick the uh, point in the uh, roof itself. Gives you a little bit of leverage while you're uh, ventilating. Um, you can take windows and then pry the um, window sills and things out with it. Yeah. You might have questions because I'm running out of things. Because I am terrible at this. What else can you do? Huh? What else can you do with it? Search. Um, can you use it on extrications? Like, I know we do fire a lot, but can you use it on extrications? You could use it on extrications. Force, forcible entry the, or anything? Uh, I don't know. Prying the doors open if you can use just that without anything else, or even the um, hood of the car being able to get that up to get into it. I'm running out of things. Is it made up with any other tools? See, this is why we have you. Um, you can take it with the uh, axe, um, and now uh, I'm going to forget what it's called. Uh, marry them together so you can take them both in either at once, or just take them separately. Usually you can take them in at both to the door at once, and then you can force your way into the front door of a house if you need to, if it's not unlocked. Um, usually with you and your partner that's there, you can strike the uh, blunt end while the uh, pry portion is in the door, depending on which way you're going to do it. Can we use it on EMS calls or? I wouldn't use it on EMS calls unless you're going to knock somebody out with it. Well. <laughs> That's also what auction therapy is for with the auction bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. All right. You good? EMS and we're going to fire. I'm Robbie. Uh, we were told to pick our favorite fire tool, so I decided to grab the Halligan bar here. Uh, formerly known as the Kelly tool. Um, kind of like what one of my colleagues said earlier. Uh, it was invented by uh, Hugh Halligan, former chief of New York City Fire Department in 1948. So it's been around for a while, about six, dec six decades or so. Um, tons of different uses for it. Me, personally, I like to use it more on extrications. Um, not necessarily my go-to tool on a fire, but more on extrications. Um, extrications, tons of uses for it. Um, you got a couple different ends here. You got a wedge end and a pick end. Then you got your fork end. Um, so just as far as extrications go, um, when I first started in fire school, um, you know we were always told about making our purse point. So for how I still do it now, is I'll take my uh, wedge point here, put in the door, twist up and down, make my purse point. So then you can set your take your spreaders in there and start filling. Uh, your pick end, as far as extrication, a couple different options for this. Um, on your trunk, one thing that I like to do is I'll put this right on the lock on the trunk and then have somebody with a hammer, sledgehammer, come back, start hammering, and knock that um, 
lock in. And then uh, you got your forked in here. Um, again, different options for it. You can still get in there with your point and twist. Um, another thing I like to do is if you don't have a window punch handy, you can actually slide this down in the, between the door and the window and just lightly twist on it using the uh, pick in here and it will uh, usually pop the window for you. Um, force entry is another option for this tool. Um, Trying to make entry into a house. So yeah, you can use it on EMS calls for that purpose as uh, just making entry into the house. We've done it a few times. Um, it's all around. It's a great multi-tool. Um, tons of uses all the way around for it. Um, you know, just fire ground. A lot of people don't really think about it, but your fork in here is great for shutting off gas meters if need be. Um, so that's about it. Any questions? I mean, I can sit here and talk for a while on it, but can you use the fork in to maybe break open a padlock? Absolutely. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, there's tons of different uses for uh, padlocks. Um, Tons, tons of different things. So, any other questions, or we can sit here and talk about it some more, or what? Well, you look like you got a question. No, no, I'm good. Okay, okay. Alrighty. Hose string nozzles. Okay. So fog nozzles, my most favorite. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Who are you again? Jesus. Here we go. Yeah. Yes, Jesus. I'm Jovi. I'm from Madison Township, and I want to talk about fog nozzles. Yeah. All right, my most favorite nozzle in the fire service, hands down, the best thing out there. Smooth boards waste way too much water. These don't. They do the job the way they're supposed to. The reason why is because they turn into a fog pattern, right? So water, it expands 1,700 times at 212 degrees. So when you turn this into a fog, you're giving the, uh, what do you, density? See, I should have studied a little bit more. All right, so fog nozzle allows it to turn the steam faster. Thank you, sir. Then it does in the straight stream. You can also, when it's in the fog, it turns into steam, it's pushing the oxygen out of the room, suffocating the fire. After you knock down the fire, you can turn it to a smooth, not a smooth, a straight stream and attack the seat of the fire. Um, pressures on these things are a little bit different than a smooth bore. You keep these at 100 PSI most all the time. Uh, where the smooth bore you, I don't really know, to tell you the truth, it depends on who you ask. Yes, people say 50, people say 110. So whatever you want to hold until they tell you to turn it down. Hi. So you have your SCBA bottle that's in front of you utilizes you to be able to breathe because obviously yes sir what's your name sir I am Kevin Walker I've been in the fire service for 10 years currently at Madison Township on C shift as an engineer um, this can be used for multiple different uses one could be for uh, obviously our breathing packs so that way we have air to breathe so we're not inhaling all the carcinogens. Another one, you can use it to uh, utilize airbags for extrication or for lifting, shoring, whatnot. Uh, each department has different manufacturers. There's different bottle styles, different bottle pressures. So make sure that if you are on a mutual aid department or on a fire with a mutual aid department, that you actually know what packs they have, what bottles they have, so you don't just go to their truck, grab their pack, and it doesn't work with yours. <clears throat> Along with that, um, have you guys actually used airbags with these before? Using the airbag controllers, whatnot, so you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, have you ever used air tools? Okay. Um, do you guys have any other ideas of what we can use this for? You have any other questions for me about it? Whether manufacturers. Is that a 45 minute bottle, an hour bottle, you know? I believe this is a 45 minute bottle. I will 
double check before I tell you. <coughs> I believe so it is. Once all the air is out of them, do you guys send them off and refill it or what? Um, if you have a, an apparatus on scene that has a cascade system built into it, you can refill on scene. If not, there are spare bottles throughout each apparatus that should supply a pack with one more change out, if not more. I know like on our rescue we have at least 12 SCBA bottles. Anything else? I believe that's it. Alrighty.